Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and in this video I'm going to be going over how to create a basic home page and navigation for your Google Sheets CRM system. This is the home page design that I'm using at the moment. I have left a lot of the space blank because I'll be using that for different things in the future but I haven't implemented those yet. As you're building your Google Sheets CRM you might like to customize this home page for now, my spreadsheet only has two sheets, home and a copy of my vehicle logbook sheet. And on the home page, there are a few different buttons here, which we can use to link to different pages as we create them. At the top of the page, I have a label for home and I also have some rows frozen. To start with, I'll describe what a frozen row is. You can see at the top, there's a thicker line just underneath line six. And when I scroll down the sheet, those six lines stay with me wherever I scroll. This is a handy way of keeping your header at the top of the sheet, no matter where you are. So if you have particular information up there, like column headers, you can always see what they are. It's quite simple to do. You can simply select the row which you want to freeze up to. You can freeze as many rows as you like, but obviously whatever fits on your screen is going to be about the limit. Otherwise you won't be able to see any of the other rows while you're scrolling. If you want to unfreeze a row, you can click on view, freeze, and then no rows. I've used this feature quite extensively throughout the spreadsheet, so I thought it would be a good thing to touch on to begin with. Now just underneath those frozen rows, I've got the header for my navigation menu with a little note in here that says click to navigate. And while these menu items do look like regular text in cells, they're actually images. So if I click on one, I can drag that wherever I want it to be, and you can see that it's transparent. This is simply an image with text in it, which I'll be using as a button. So I'll delete that guy, and I'll show you how we've created those. First of all, you'll need to go to Insert, and then Drawing. And here you can create a drawing or an image in several different ways. You can either choose a basic shape, and color that as you need it. You can insert an image by clicking on the image icon at the top of the screen, and that can either be an icon, maybe one that you've pulled from Google, or you can use an actual photo and make that your button. However, I just want to use text at the moment, so I'll delete this image and click on the text box button. You can drag a text box to any size that you like, and then reposition it by grabbing hold of the edge and dragging it where it needs to be. If you drag it to the top corner, you can use the rulers to get the image size that you need. And then you can enter text just like you normally would. You can also control the font size, make it bold, or add a text color if you want to. And you can leave the background transparent if you have something behind it, or you can color in the background if you want to. So for now, I'll just leave this as black text on a transparent background. Once I'm happy with what I've got, I'll click save and close, and the image will be dropped onto the spreadsheet. You can simply click on that to reposition it where it needs to go. Now, if you're not quite happy with it, say I don't want that to be bold anymore and I want it to extend out here, we can simply drag that guy, but it's going to stretch the text and we don't really want that. So instead, what I'll do is click on the little ellipse, the dot, dot, dot here, and click on edit, and we can adjust this text as we need to. I'll put this up here against the rulers once more and stretch that out to the next mark, save and close, and that looks a bit better. So we can see the image almost stretches to the edge of the button and you can adjust that as much as you need to. However, simply clicking on the button doesn't do anything just yet, and that's because I haven't yet assigned a script to it. You can assign scripts to buttons or images or drawings, whatever you want to call them, which will then execute JavaScript code 
and do a particular thing, whether it's navigate somewhere else on the sheet or perform some calculation or clear some data, whatever it is that you want to do. We'll be using that quite extensively as well throughout the sheet. So this is an important basic thing to know. However, I can't assign a script just yet because I don't yet have any. So right off the bat, we'll be jumping into the Google Sheets script feature and I'll show you how to create a small script that will let you navigate between two sheets. First of all, navigate up to Tools and then Script Editor. And you should see another tab open up. And you should have a blank project with a blank script file in it. First of all, you'll want to give your project a name so that you can differentiate it between other projects. I'll call this one GSS CRM demo. Now within one project, you might have several different script files and you'll see these lined up in the column on the left hand side. You may also end up with several of these. So it's a good idea to rename your individual script files based on what they do. And so I'll call this one navigation. And by default, the first script file will have a empty function in it called my function. This is the name that you'll be adding to your button to execute that particular script. However, we don't want to use that. I've got one ready made that I want to use. So I'll hit control A to select everything and then delete to blank this sheet. And then I'll paste my pre-made script into this script file, control V, and there it is. Now, if you've never written or looked at JavaScript before, this might look a bit complicated, but it's really quite simple. And there's only a couple of different elements here that you need to get your head around. First of all, we have the name of the function, and this is what you'll be assigning to the button. So you can highlight that, copy it, uh, not including the parentheses, and then navigate back to your button, right click, and from the drop down, you can assign a script and paste that name in here. Click OK, and that script is now assigned. Now it doesn't necessarily work yet. Um, but we have already assigned it to that button. So when we press the button, it will try to execute that script and it may work or it may fail. So let's take another look at the script. And you can see that this entire section here is indented. That means that all of this is included within this function. And while the first two rows do look a bit complex, uh, you'll come to know them very well because you'll probably find these two rows or something similar to them in just about every function that you come across. And effectively, they're defining where this function is going to work. The two things which are being defined are variables. And the first variable is the spreadsheet itself. So we're asking the spreadsheet app to get the active spreadsheet. That's just whichever spreadsheet we happen to be looking at when we execute the code. And then the variable sheet is looking at SS. That's the entire spreadsheet and we're saying get the active sheet. The third variable which we're defining is called name selection. And this is simply the name of the sheet that we want to end up on when we execute the code. At the moment, we've just got a string here called vehicle logbook, and that's what I want my sheet to be called. So I'll copy that and navigate back to my spreadsheet and right click on this sheet down here, rename, and control V to paste. Or let's say you didn't want to name it that and you wanted to change the name of the variable, you can rename this to car logbook. And then we can change the variable name here to match. Whichever way suits you, you can either change the name of the sheet or the name of the variable. As you're working through these scripts, you might see a lot of this yellow text here. Uh, these are simply comments in the code that have no bearing on how the code actually functions. It's just your own description of what particular things do. And you can make your own by adding two forward slashes and then typing whatever text you want. The fifth line in this function simply says try and it does exactly what it sounds like. It'll try to do a particular thing, and if it succeeds, then great, and if it fails, then it will do whatever we've determined it should do. So in this instance, what it's going to try to do 
is look at the spreadsheet and it will try to set the active sheet as whatever is in name selection. And name selection is this variable back here. So it'll try to find car logbook. Now, if there is a sheet called car logbook, it'll simply navigate directly there because what we're asking it to do is now set the active sheet as this. And so it will jump immediately to that sheet. If there is no sheet with this name, it's not going to do anything at all because we've asked it to catch any errors and not do anything with them. So effectively, it's not even going to tell you that it failed to find the sheet. It's just going to do nothing. Before executing your code, you should always save your changes. You can either do that by going to File and then Save or hitting Control S on your keyboard. In certain instances, you might see a little red error at the top of the screen. Uh, that means that the code is not viable and that you need to correct whatever error you have there before you can actually save it. But luckily we're all good, so now we can go ahead and try to run this script. Come back to our homepage and we'll click on Vehicle Logbook. Now the first time that you run any script, it'll ask for authorization. That's basically a safety precaution to make sure that you're not running any uh, malicious code on your spreadsheet without realizing it. Now, although this looks a little bit scary, so long as it's code that you've written or that you've implemented or something that you're familiar with, then there's really no risk. So what we want to do is hit continue and a little window will pop up. It'll ask us to choose the account to run this script within and I'll choose my basic Gmail account. It'll let you know that the app is not verified. That's quite normal. You'll want to scroll down to advanced and scroll down some more and click go to whatever your uh, script name is. It's going to warn you what that script is going to try to do. So long as you're comfortable and familiar with the code that you're running, then you don't need to worry about any of this. Click allow. The little pop-up window will disappear and the code will continue to run. I haven't really done anything else and the script has immediately jumped to my vehicle logbook. I can show you that again. Vehicle logbook. And we're there. It'll only ever ask for your authorization the first time. Every subsequent time, the script will simply work unless you've added new features which make use of different kinds of permissions, in which case you may need to authorize those permissions as well. Now, if I came down here and renamed my sheet to vehicle logbook and went back to my home page and tried to run this script again, you see it simply finishes and doesn't do anything. So it's failed to find that sheet and simply refuse to throw any errors. We can now fix that by navigating back to our script editor and changing the name of the variable here. Save our changes and try once more. And there we go. Now for each of the buttons on your home screen, not only will you have to have a separate button, you'll also have to have a separate sheet and a separate function. So we already have our button, business expenses, we want to make a sheet called approximately the same thing. It doesn't have to have exactly the same name. And then in our script editor, we can simply make a copy of this entire function, paste it down below and change this variable here. And we'll also need to define an individual function name. The function name doesn't really matter so long as you know what it is and can assign it to your button. And I'll save my changes, so I'll copy that, come back to my spreadsheet, and assign that script to this button. Now, although we have a completely new function here, because it's running all in the same project, you don't need to give permission to it a second time. So when I click on this button, you can see we jump straight to that sheet without any worries. Now, if I decided that this function name was a bit too verbose. We might like to shorten that to something simpler. And save. But if I now try to press my navigation button again, it'll tell me that no such script exists. But because this button is now assigned to a script, in order to change the script, we need to right click and from the menu select assign script and change what you need to change here. 
always leaving the parentheses out, and now my script should run again. You may also see that the buttons here are in very large cells and they have very wide borders on them. This is very simple to add to your own sheet and you can merge whichever cells you want to merge by selecting a group of them and clicking on the Merge Cells button at the top of the screen. And then you can add a border to that as well by clicking on the button just next to it, Borders, and selecting whichever border type you want. Let's say that one. Now that's not very prominent, so we might make that thicker. There we go. And you can even give it a specific color if you want. We'll first need to remove the border and then add it back in. Maybe a nice green. There we go. Okay, so that covers everything that you see on this sheet. We have our frozen rows, we have our merged cells, we have our borders, and we have our drawings, which we've inserted here as text boxes. We've created a brand new script sheet and populated it with two functions, which we've customized to do two different things. And then we've assigned both of those functions to individual buttons on the sheet. So now you can take what you've learned here and start applying this to your own Google Sheets CRM. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and work on some of the more complicated things on other sheets. Great, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.